everybody, it's Rebecca here at Weimer Made. Last year, around this time, Caitlin over at Book Chats and I created the Best Picture tag for the Oscars for last year. Take all the nominees for Best Picture for that year and we come up with a question that has to go along with those movies in particular. So this tag changes every single year and with this year's Oscar ceremony a little under a month away, they air on February 28th, so they're so close. So we decided that it was time to bring back the tag and go along with this year's nominees. So let's start, it's alphabetical order and we're just gonna jump right on in. There are eight questions and a bonus question at the end. So again, one for each of the films nominated for Best Picture. I'm a big movie person and I do make it my goal every year to see all of the nominated movies before the ceremony starts. I've completed it the last two years and so far this year I've only seen two. So I've got a ways to go, but this will help me. So let's get into the questions. The first one is The Big Short. No one's paying attention. The banks got greedy <laughs> and we can profit off of their stupidity. You wanna bet against the banks? I think we're either high or having a stroke. Kind of brilliant. And the question for this is a book that you thought was going to be boring and ended up really interesting. And I went with To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I first read this book uh, the summer before the sixth grade. So I was what, like 13 or something? And I was like required reading, blah, blah, blah. And I was reading it and I didn't want to because I thought it was gonna be really boring because it was for school. But my aunt told me it was one of her favorite books and I got into it and now it's ended up being one of my favorite books. And I just think it's really great. But at the time I was like, Meh. Just like I'm sure you were at one point too. The next question is for Bridge of Spies. Asking me to violate the Constitution. Do you know how people will look at us? The family of a man trying to free a traitor? Everyone deserves a defense. Every person matters. And this is a book that you find yourself defending against popular opinion. I decided to go with Endgame by uh, James Frey and Nils Johnson Shelton because people don't won't even read it because it's James Frey and I totally get it. I totally get the full Fathom 5. We don't want to support it. But I actually did really like this book. This is one of the first books I talked about on this channel a year ago because I had just read it and I actually really liked it. And I didn't know anything about Full Fathom 5 at the time. Now I do, I get it. But that doesn't mean that the book isn't good. Maybe just don't buy it. Just get it from the library because it's still a good book. I mean, it's interesting. And the comparison to The Hunger Games is not valid. So, you know, don't go there. Number three is for Brooklyn. Ireland must seem very backward to you now. Is that Jim Farrell I saw? He's a catch for someone. I have a life halfway across the sea. Your life here could be just as good. And it's a character who's kind of torn between do two different sides or two different cultures. And I went with Froy from Finnegan of the Rock and Froy of the Exiles and Quintana of Sharon, the Lumetaire Chronicles, which we all know that's like this year's Red Rising for me because I love it so much. Uh, and so this is Froy of the Exiles, the second one, and I'm going with Froy. And I'm not going to tell you why, because if you haven't read it, it really will give away way too much. But Froy is definitely caught in the middle of some major sides. Next up is Mad Max. Where is she taking them? I want them back! And it's a character that maybe doesn't speak a lot, but whose actions speak louder than their words. Or, you know, maybe it's just an action-packed type thing. Anyway, I decided to go with Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. I just finished this and it was amazing. And Nimona is so cool and she talks. Yes, she does talk, but what she does, her actions are definitely a lot more prominent than her words, like holy goodnessness. Cause, wow. The Martian! This was the only one that I'd seen at the time that the movie list had been released. This will come as quite a shock to my crewmates. And to NASA. And to the entire world. But I'm still alive. Surprise! Book that takes place on a planet that is not Earth. So, going with the Mars theme, I had to go with Red Rising. <laughs> because by, by Pierce Brown, because I love this so much. I could have gone with Illuminae, but I didn't because I wanted to 
again, share the love of Red Rising and the fact that Morningstar comes out tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm so excited. So I wanted to share Red Rising love again because I'm excited. The Revenant. I'm afraid to die anymore. I've done it already. The best book or just a book that is by an author whose first language is not English. And I decided to go with Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruas Zafon, who, which he is a Spanish writer and this takes place in Spain. And it is brilliant, it is a beautiful book and I loved it so much and I need to read the other ones. It's really good. And it talks about a love for books. So who doesn't like that? This one's really, really, really good. And he's not, his first language is not English. Room. For five years, you made life in that small room, that prison, as nurturing and normal as you could. A book with a close or small setting. I did read Room, and I've also seen the movie for that one now too. So I could have gone with the book version of Room, but I didn't. I decided to go with Wool uh, and the Silo Saga by Hugh Howey. This entire thing it takes place in an underground silo. They can't leave it. If they do, they die. And there's like 180 floors or something, so it's pretty confined. I mean, it's 180 floors, but it's still, it's, it, you can't leave it. You're stuck there forever. It's not as small as Room, though. Room is smaller. Still, I would get claustrophobic. But imagine like your leg muscles from all those stairs, man. Whew. The last movie question is for Spotlight. They'll try to silence anyone who speaks out. You leave me alone, you hear me, goddammit? 6% act out sexually. 6% is 90. 90 priests. If there were 90 of these bastards, people would know. And it's a book that deals with a difficult subject. I decided to go with 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher because this does deal with depression and suicide, which is a very difficult topic. Uh, there's some other really great books about this topic as well. And there's some other great books that deal with difficult issues. But I decided to go with this one just because I just thought it was so wonderfully written and a really interesting style. But again, that trigger warning is there, so just be advised. And finally, the last question for the best picture tag for 2016 is not really to do with the movies that are nominated, but the ones that weren't. And if you know, there's that big controversy this year, the hashtag Oscars so white, where there are no major movies or categories dealing with people of color. And I think that's ridiculous and terrible and so Caitlin and I wanted to kind of address that with this tag because it is something that's very current and relevant and important. So we decided to throw in a bonus question which is to pick a book that you would like to see adapted to the screen with a person of color as the main character. So many books um, have don't necessarily have the description of the main character in there as being black or white or anything And they just maybe they even say like olive skin which could is a wide variety of what they could look like Hermione Granger was listed as just having big bushy frizzy hair and really smart and I thought it was brilliant that in the play the Cursed Child, the casting of Hermione what went to an actor of color, and I think that's brilliant. So we decided to kind of throw this question in there, and it could be a character that is written as being black, or it could be a character that could be adapted and played by anybody. And I think that's the point of it, is that so many roles are cast to white actors that don't need to be cast by white actors. And we kind of wanted to bring that to light and throw this question in there. So I decided to go with Ready Player One because I really, I think, I know they're making a movie of this and they've already, I think, casted it. I don't know who it is and I don't care. But, I, and it technically, Wade, the main character, is supposed to be white because they describe him as pale. But couldn't you see like Michael B. Jordan or Echo Kellum or somebody playing Wade, I think it would be really, really, really cool to see Wade played by just anybody. It doesn't have to be a white guy just because he's pale. I feel like we make changes with hair color all the time in movie adaptations. Why not skin color too? Well, that is the best picture tag 2016. Be sure to check out Caitlin's video. It's up right now. I'll put a link to it. You can check it out uh, where she takes on these same questions. We're putting it up together because uh, we both, it's a collab. It's a collaborative effort for us to do this. So I want to tag everybody because it is a brand new sort of kind of thing, new tag. 
it's a reinterpretation of last year's tag. So I'm tagging everybody to prepare everybody and get us all ready for the Oscars 2016 coming at you on February 28th. And this is not promoted by the Oscars, I just really like them except for the issues that I've already previously stated. Anyway, that's it, and let me know if you decide to do it, leave a link down below, and that is it for me today. I'll see you next time.